Today on Real Life, what's your calling and are you ready to flourish in your purpose? Stacey Frenis shares how you can cultivate your creativity for the kingdom and she gives a taste of her music. All that and more right now on Real Life. This is real life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, he empowers you. And the Bible is your and my guide to abundant life. Amen. I'm your host, Don Black. I'm so glad you're here. And I'm with my beautiful bride, co-host Terry. Oh, thank you, my host, my beautiful host. <laughs> We've done that before. I know, I that know. That would never work. You works. need to come up with another adjective. I've been your what, bride for almost 27 years. Well, what would you rather me call you rather than bride? What's a better I adjective? I have no idea. You'll have, you're the creative one in the bunch here. Between you and me, you're the creative one. We're so what glad. What should we call Terry? <laughs> call, call me Terry. Call 888. T, T for Terry. T, I love T too. Ooh, there we go. Well, hey, we're so glad you yes, joined very us much so. for this program. We've got special guests in the studio for the program that's going to be ministering to us in music. Mm -hmm. We're going to hear about God's path, how he takes us down a path. That's right. You know, many many don't realize that. Many think no? that life mm -hmm. is stat is being standing still. You know that we. That's right. We're just kind of here. Well, we're are just here. Yeah, and like they're just surrounded by trees. What is that saying? You don't see the trees for the forest, or the forest for the trees. One of that one always, of us. I was always confused by that saying. Well, you just are sort of standing still, and you're not moving forward. And even a baby step is going forward, folks. You know, right? See, because the Lord has put before us mm -hmm. this journey. It's called a journey. And this journey that he has laid out for us, it's an adventure. An adventure that we get to participate in, in a supernatural way. Mm -hmm. And God has put himself in us. That's right. His Holy Spirit in us. I like to say there's greatness in us. There's greater greatness in he, you. What? There's that verse. That's greater what I say. Greater is he that is in us than he, he who's that is in the, in the world. world. And there's four, a song. Four. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Greater is he that is go. in me. Do you know that one? Uh, okay, if I did, I wouldn't pretend, pretend like I didn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> greatness lives song. in yeah. us. Now, here's That's the point. Right. Here's my point mm -hmm. is that journey that I was describing, that adventure that we are on, we, we need to see it like that. We That's need to right. see this. That's right. This isn't just living. Don't, let's not just live another day. Let's mm -hmm. just not put another 24 hours in and punch the clock. Let's live an adventure today. And that That's adventure right. is a holy and divinely inspired adventure that takes us more and more towards Jesus. That's right. See, so we're kind of coming closer and closer to Jesus. And when he comes back, and that's kind of the big next thing, mm -hmm. is Jesus coming back for his bride, the church. We're going to see him in the air. When we look up and see him in the air, it's going to be a great and grand and glorious day. So Amen. look forward to that. Paul used to say that, it said it in the Bible, encourage each other with these words. Mm -hmm. Encourage each other with these words because they were under tribulation. Maybe you're under tribulation too. Maybe your, your life has got a lot of challenges in it. Maybe there's health issues in your life, financial issues. Maybe your family have family issues. Those are tribulations. Those are trials. But listen, today, let's focus on being of good cheer. That's right. Because you know why? Why? What's the scripture say? Because I have overcome Come. the, the world. world. That's right. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We're so glad you're mm -hmm. part of this, this program with us. We do it every day, every day, walking out this life that Jesus has promised us to walk out. In John 10, 10, he said, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but I've come that you may have life and... Life abundantly. Have it abundantly. Or so we that's, call it real life. That's what we call real mm -hmm. life. So welcome to real life. If you just tuned in, we've got some new stations that are carrying their programs. Welcome. If you're just tuning howdy. in. Howdy. Glad How's that? Howdy. Yeah. Welcome. Howdy. <laughs> hey. Hi, howdy. Hola. So we're, we're glad. <laughs> that's from here. Some is down in Tennessee. In that regard, we came from Tennessee. So mm -hmm. howdy to you. And we are looking forward to the program. But first... Let's go see what Sydney's found for us in the news.
The star of The Passion of the Christ says Hollywood rejected him after he played Jesus. Jim Caviezel portrayed the Messiah in the 2004 biblical blockbuster. More than a decade later, the movie still remains as the highest grossing faith-based film of all time. Caviezel says when he played the role, it was no coincidence he was 33 years old at the time and his initials were JC. The actor told the media he was rejected just like Christ by Hollywood producers. He says that roles that he now takes have to be faith-focused and filled with purpose and love. Caviezel says his Christian duty was not only to play the Christ on the big screen, but to live out his faith in everyday life. I like the passion of the Christ, and all, but you know that movie I still watch. We try to watch it on Easter, right? Pa on, on Good Friday, but it's hard. It's still hard for me to watch that. He yeah. fast forwards the beating I part do. for me because yeah. it's it's just it it just is such a. Uh, oh, what's the right word? Graphic. How you feel? Oh, yeah. But I know <laughs> that's how it is, but it's still a really difficult thing for me to Heart stomach. Heartbreaking. Yeah. It Heart brought wrenching. the Bible to life. You know, when we mm -hmm. go back and we read that, we don't, sometimes our mind doesn't want to go there, but I think it's so important. Just like war, you know, you like history, the people who lived through that have a greater appreciation for freedom mm. than those who've never seen or experienced what war and the effects are. Absolutely. So, you know, for us as believers, watching it, for me, it, it, like, I just will weep. But the reality is he did that for us. Amen. So that we really can seek in. It, it's not something light that he did. He I really had the great privilege of working with Charles Stanley and they took that film out before they released it, actually before it was finally, a final cut, before it's final edit. Mm -hmm. And they brought it to different Christian leaders and watched, had, to get their opinions. Because mm -hmm. Hollywood had turned its back on that movie. They told Mel Gibson that it would never, should never be produced, and if it was, it would be the end of his career. Mm -hmm. So he bypassed the distribution companies and went straight to the churches, and so he went to the Christian leaders. And he came to Charles, and I was, part of Charles's leadership team and so I went with Charles and we watched this screening one of the private screening rooms and we watched that film and it was just it was just so hard you know just hard to watch yeah. and this was even before and so afterwards um, Mel Gibson's there his senior producer was there and, and they said what do you what do you what do you gentlemen think and we were in Atlanta and Charles said this is just really a powerful movie but there's things here that need to be changed in the movie from, from his perspective, and, he, and, and I agree his perspective, because in the first cut, they didn't show Jesus resurrecting from the dead. Mm -hmm. They just showed this grave and light in the grave. It didn't right. have a, you didn't see the body. Right. See, and, and, and Dr. Stanley said to him, he said, you know, you, we Christians believe in the bodily re resurrection. W yeah. We need to see his body. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. Mel, Mel's a Catholic, and he said, oh, okay, all right, we'll keep that in consideration. And then he also said to him, too much blood and guts, too, too, too oh. visual. Mm -hmm. We didn't take that out. <laughs> no, he didn't. Didn't take that out. He didn't. But it's probably the most uh, dramatic presentation of the life of Jesus right. that I've ever seen. And so if you've never seen The Passion of Christ, millions and millions and millions have, mm -hmm. I'd highly recommend it. But you got to be sensitive to it because it does Absolutely. have a lot of things in it that that causes you to just want to turn your head. Well, I am just excited too about, I cannot say this actor's last name, but Jim C, he, who played Caviezel? G. Yes, thank you. That there's not a whole lot of outspoken actors in Hollywood that share their faith and their commitment right. to be in faith-based films. Mm -hmm. And I just applaud that they take that step. It's a shame that they have to be sort of outcast, yeah. but I, we just applaud that they are making that commitment. I feel that God's blessing will be on their you life. Know, mm -hmm. he, when he was making the film, when Jim was playing Christ, um, he got hit by lightning on the cross. No way. Mm -hmm. he got hit by, and one time when they were the scourge scene, mm -hmm. they weren't supposed to really hit him, but they actually, one of the things actually hit him. <gasps> And hit his skin. Oh my gosh! Said it was a, his, he, he it was really painful. He obviously. was truly identifying. Well, Absolutely. yeah, for that wow. minute, yes, for that I know. minute. But but movies are powerful ways they to sure tell are. the story of life. Mm -hmm. you know? 
Absolutely. Right. Media as we know it is a huge opportunity to get the gospel out yes, it is. to as many as possible, as quickly as possible, in the power of the Holy Spirit and for the glory of God. That's Hallelujah. Why we're here. That's why we're here. You got it, this sister. Right, it's exciting Amen. when you think about it, Amen. how God is using media in these last days mm -hmm. to speak his word, uh -huh. to get people's attention and change their lives. The message doesn't ever change. Mm -mm. Now, the, the, times of, the type of delivery may change. I I mean, we might have music, we might have the spoken word, we may right. have just different at, different messengers, but the message never changes. That's right. Amen. So Amen. we're thankful for this. But your point is really mm -hmm. good. These are the end days. Yes. Mm -hmm. Look look at that with great enthusiasm, folks. Mm -hmm. Don't see that with fear. When you hear that, when you hear somebody say that, you hear me say that or anybody say it, don't think of it with fear. Think of it with excitement because we're going to be privileged to see God's kingdom come. Amen. That's right. <laughs> I, I just, I, how, how, what do you say about okay. that? You know, his, his timing is his timing. We don't, we can't make God do what he's doing. He's going to do it when he does. But his prophetic line, word, his word, prophetic word lines up to the seasons. And he said, of the seasons, I'd have no man ignorant. So let's not be ignorant of That's the right. seasons. That's right. Amen. Be prepared. Our redemption draws nigh. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What's next? Well, coming up next, we have an interview with Stacy Frenis. But first, here she is singing Disarm.
When I lost my job, our bills kept coming faster than we could pay them. My wife and I felt like we were drowning, that there was no way to be free. My addiction became worse and worse until one day my wife found me on the floor. I need hope. I wish I could feel joy again. I've become so negative. Every day our prayer partners take calls from hurting people. We're working in God's harvest field 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Will you join us in this kingdom work? When you become a harvest partner, we're gonna send you our Turning the Tide teaching on DVD, two CD set, and a study guide. This is a powerful teaching to help turn the tide in your life. We'll send it along with our beautiful harvest partner mug. This is our gift to you, call now. You know, I, I, uh, every time I see that spot about our partners, I think about, mm -hmm. you know, I, I see faces. That's right. You know, yeah. I just see people's mm -hmm. faces and sweet people who stand with us. That's right. You know, for, and we want you to stand with us as well. You know, mm -hmm. we love our partners and we love to have new partners for $25 a month. Mm -hmm. We just ask that you would just join us and just help us to spread the gospel message throughout the whole world. Hey, we are in India now. We're in Australia. We're in California. We're in Texas. And you know what? We need your help to get the to get the word out so that we can get our message out there. Well, we're just I'm just so thankful for all the partners that have said mm -hmm. through the years we are we've celebrated our thirty eighth anniversary mm -hmm. in April. Thirty eight years. That's right. Mm -hmm. Think back and I was Jerry and I have only been here for five, just almost five years. That's right. But mm -hmm. the God, what God has begun, He's going to finish. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's the way He works. He doesn't start something and stop it. He keep, continues. Vision, vision is for eternity. Mm -hmm. God doesn't have a short vision. He has a long vision. He sure does. That's true for Cornerstone. That's true for you. Mm -hmm. It's true for you in your life. So be our partner. Step up into it. Get, in the, get into the fray. Get into the front lines with us as we tell people about the love of God and how Jesus can save us from this world and, yes. mm -hmm. and give us gifts. And then we're gonna talk our next guest, our next guest about gifts. Yes, multi-talented, Stacy Furness. She inspires this audiences all over the country with her music. Now she's written a book called Flourish, Cultivate Creativity, Sew Beauty, Live in Color, or <laughs> Live in Color. I don't know, we'll have to find out. Stacy, welcome. Thank you so much. Yes, Good okay. To be here. First question, is it live in color? Live in okay. color. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. I was like, oh, what should I have said? So we're glad you're here. Thank For, you. First time with us on, on Real Life. It is, absolutely. Well, you know we have an initiation. Our family at home are used to this. Uh oh. We have an initiation. <laughs> we need we need for you to introduce yourself to our to our to our viewers, to yeah. our family. Tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your family. Sure. And uh, just give us a little personal kind of peek inside your life. Absolutely. Well, I'm Stacy Frenis. Uh, I live right outside the San Francisco Bay Area, mm -hmm. and um, I have a husband named Abe, and I have two children named uh, Abby and Zach. And uh, I have been doing music for as long as I can remember, ever since junior high is when I learned how yeah. to play guitar and piano and started writing music. And since then have really followed a path of, of creating music and um, sharing it with folks however and whenever and however I can. And then recently um, became an author with this book and it mm -hmm. just grew out of my, my love for the creative process and for how mm -hmm. to put together something that might encourage others in their Absolutely. creative journey is kind of where that book came from. Well, your book is sort of like we're just sitting in a living room and we're just talking to one another. So it's a very easy reading, conversational kind of uh, kind of a um, stories, right? You know, yeah. I would say. I'm mm -hmm. so glad you said that. That's mm -hmm. exactly how I hoped it would come across. Mm -hmm. It's just as conversations about um, about what, how to cultivate a life in which our gifts find expression. Mm -hmm. It's really that's what it's about, and how to, you know, connect that with the Holy Spirit, and how to um, serve and love others in our gifting, but also understand that our gifts bring us a deep sense of joy and a sense mm -hmm. of purpose and meaning in our lives. When, when did yes. you first discover mm -hmm. that you had been given gifts? You said when you were back as a young lady. Sure. Can yeah. you tell us how that, how that evolved? 
I can. I, I can remember it so clearly because I, I always loved words and music as a mm -hmm. little girl. Um, my mom tells me that to, when she cleaned house on Saturday mornings, there were three kids, and I was easy because she'd put me on the couch and put some records on the record player and just let me sit while the records played. And, of course, uh -huh. remember the days when the record actually fell Absolutely. from the... Absolutely. <laughs> the vinyl. Yeah, yeah. the vinyl. <laughs> so I had a love, and that was like my love language, was just listening to music. And then I always wrote poetry and essays and um, kept diaries. Well, it wasn't until I was 12 years old that I actually was invited to a winter camp and met the Lord Jesus for the first time um, mm. in, in a profoundly uh, life-changing way. And at that point, when my new life inside started, that's also when I realized all these words I've been writing on a page were starting to come alive into melodies, and I wanted to write them as songs. Mm. So I started songwriting right from about that very conversion weekend. Mm -hmm. I started wanting to write songs about this new life inside of me, and so I have been writing since songwriting since I was um, just a young girl. Wow. Yeah. And so yeah. I, in your book, you talked about, though, like you had been song, you'd done songwriting and you sing as well. Right. And, um, and uh, you had a, this break in Nashville, your first time, and it was in the book, and how something happened, but yeah. that, that kept you to go. If you could share a little bit about that. Absolutely. Too. I had always, you know, growing up in, in kind of the Christian culture and community, I had always thought that, well, if you have the gift of music, then, well, you should, you should probably go to Nashville and get a record deal and really make it legitimate and solidify it. And, and I thought that was the path that one takes if one has that kind of gift. So, so in my early 20s, um, I did that. I made a trek out to Nashville and did what they call a showcase for all the record producers and, and played my songs and then went and had meeting after meeting after meeting with all the record label executives. And in each case, the record label executives were saying, well, we, we love your songs and we love this, we love that, but right now, you know, it's not a good fit or it's not, it, like one after another, I basically heard no, 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 mm. no. And I went back home to California and, if, probably six months, I just cried and thought mm -hmm. God had completely given mm -hmm. up on me. I thought he had given me this desire, these gifts, and then said, no, mm -hmm. you're not going to use them. Um, but out of that six months of crying and feeling real sorry for myself, I actually kind of, my husband and I sort of began to talk about, well, what would this look like if we just did this on our own, if we did mm -hmm. it independently? And that was before in, independent music was kind of a big a thing. Right. You know, it was like, we thought, we thought, well, why don't we form our own publishing company? Why don't we form our own record label? Why don't we form our own management? And let's just figure out how the, how the big boys do it in Nashville, yeah. as it were. And let's just make this happen. And we did. And we, we basically just began um, kind of copying the model of a record label. And because we knew, we, I knew that these songs were given to me for a reason and mm -hmm. that they should be out and that they should be listened to and shared. And so we found a way to kind of create that vehicle on our own through independent publishing and, um, and have been doing that ever since. So, you know, mm -hmm. it was a closed door, but then it was a redirected door. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, it showed, when I read that, I was like, well, it showed that you were assured of the gifting that God gave you. Yes. And that just by saying no, that didn't mean that the gift was taken away and that yes. you weren't supposed to use it, but that God showed you another way yeah. to get your message out there. And, and I just thought for so many out there yes. that have gifts and talents and they might have been discouraged, that I thought that would encourage all of us to, to keep at it, the persistence of it all. The, 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 pro, the, 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 the challenge is to understand why there are gifts given. Mm -hmm. Because if we can understand why you've been given a gift, yeah. then you don't get, if, and you stay true to that. No, sometimes you can get off that. But you're given a gift by God for His purposes, not for your purposes. And so with that said, whatever He chooses to do with them through you is really His choice. Mm -hmm. And in, in your story, your testimony is God showing you what He wanted to do yeah. that wasn't part of the norm. Right. the mainstream or the, the standard the standard path. And, and my own agenda. You know, yeah. I had an agenda for my own gifts, and I mm -hmm. think a lot of us do. Well, here's how it's going to go. Check, 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 check. Here's mm -hmm. what I want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, I, I feel like the more I talk to creative people who are surrendered to the Holy Spirit and really desirous of their gifts being used of God, it's a different path for everybody. Really? It doesn't right. look like the same thing because God is such a unique multi faceted God. Because yes. you see, you could sing, you can write a song and sing it and sing it to the Lord and be just fully content. Yeah. You could just be fully content. Yes. Because that, you're just giving it back to the one who gave you 
gave it to you. That's so mm -hmm. true. And then if the if he sees fit for it to be amplified, right, taken to other places, now that's where you got to die, and he and he's got to come alive in you yes. for you to get to that place. Mm -hmm. So many talented people, and I've known so many, and I know so many now that are in watching right now. You're you're talented, and I know many of you are writers, many of you are musicians, many of you are 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 talented in the arts, many different kinds of arts, but. You've been frustrated and frustrated and frustrated because you're waiting for the big break. Right. You know that story of who's the, the movie star that got discovered? Supposedly got discovered at the uh, fountain fountain soda in Hollywood. That you know that kind of agent walks up. Oh yeah, I've yeah. been looking everywhere for you. You know, yeah. and then that person turns into a, a mega star. That's not how God uh, works. It's not how God it. works. God works step by step. That's what when you said a minute ago, Stacy. You said you, when you were young, you got on a journey or path. I think you used the word path. Yes. And that path has continued now. You're still young. It has continued <laughs> yeah. for you all the way to, what's the path look like going forward? The path going forward, it, it, it feels like such a, a blessed season in my life because with writing the book, now I can, I can go out and, and not only sing, but I can kind of weave my music in That's through great. some speaking that I'm doing around the book where I'm getting to not only use my gifts of songwriting and singing, but then also, you know, really, truly encouraging and, and edifying other creatives and mm -hmm. saying, look, it's not going to look exactly like the agenda that you thought right. for it truly die to it, truly let God be in control mm -hmm. it, and let it be inspired as in God breathed, mm -hmm. not just breathed by our own inspiration, but let it be God breathed. That's mm -hmm. amazing. And, that, and that's what you mentioned in each of your chapters. You have one chapter called Breathe, and, yes. and it's just as a, as a good reminder to all of us is this is the step, you know, like we're not, we're not hasty. Yeah. We take the opportunity to breathe, to allow God to work through us, you know? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So, and I need, we need to know that you do songwriting and you sing and that some of the songs there have been for, I was telling her one of my favorite shows was Biggest Loser, yeah. you know? <laughs> and, <laughs> and so, uh, She's so. She's not kidding either. I'm not kidding yeah. at all. So, but do you also write your lyric? Well, I know you do the, the lyrics. Do you write the music notes as well? Uh, right, I do both. I, I write music and lyrics and then I also collaborate with other writers and, mm. and songwriters. Um, but so sometimes in cases like some of the shows, um, I won't find out till later that a show has used some of my songs, but I, I always think it's such a cool thing because many times there's a song that's been used on a completely secular television show that I wrote from a very deeply spiritual place, awesome. you know, and yeah. I think sometimes the music supervisor who's choosing music doesn't realize that it's a, it's a song about faith, it's a song mm. about God, but, you know, I believe the Holy Spirit works in those ways and gets in the back door and ministers even when we absolutely. think it's something else, you I know. I know, he, yeah. well, he does, mm -hmm. you know, absolutely. Well, the, the, the thing that I want to just speak to our family about is what God's trusted with us is gifts and talents. You know, the Bible highlights some of the gifts of the Spirit and some of the fruit of the Spirit, and those are f eternal. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they, they're not just for a minute, they're forever. And it's gonna be what's gonna be like when we are with Jesus. You're gonna be singing and ministering yes. when you're with Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. You'll be along there with David. It's just Amen. a carry, is that's a wild thought. Is that <laughs> a wild thought? That's just a carry <laughs> over and same thing for you. And I just wanna encourage you that if you feel that you have gifts of creativity that have been uh, stifled, let's break out of that. Let's break out of that in Jesus' name. And this book, Flourish, is a great opportunity for you because the, the term muse is used a lot. It just means something that stimulates you and it causes you to think in a different way. The Holy Spirit in many ways is a muse in our lives. Yes. Brings that new ideas. This is kind of like that. It'll just help you start thinking a little bit differently. The way to change your world is to start changing your thinking. And mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would highly recommend you to get a copy of this for yourself or for maybe for somebody in your family and say this is, and it's, it's going to help you think outside the box. Call, or go to our website. Just go to our website, ctvn.org. We'll put a link on how you can get this and, and, and get it for your family, get it mm -hmm. for yourself. Well, thank you for coming and being yes. with us. Oh, it's mm -hmm. been a pleasure. Yeah. You're, you're, you're going to sing again, I, I think, am. before the end yeah. of the program. So, um, how can we pray for you? What's your biggest prayer request? 
Yeah, well, it, it's funny. The, the song I'm about to sing is a song called Storms, and it's a song I wrote for my kids, and it's that we, our family has been through some pretty big storms lately, and it feels like we're still kind of maneuvering those. Mm -hmm. And just understanding and learning that, that God is in the storm and that God brings beauty and treasures out of the storm. And so keeping our hearts set on that. Mm, amen. amen. Yeah. Well, good, good, prayer good partners. Let's, let's pray for Stacy and her family as they, as they come out of the storm into a time of peace, mm -hmm. into that tra tranquility, that beautiful after the storm, yes. how everything gets real good. Mm -hmm. Right. You need a, a good time, mm -hmm. a good time. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's go to Sydney. She's found some news for us. Sydney Grant for Good News 360. Here's how the Holy Spirit is moving around the nation. Roma Downey's upcoming documentary is a call to action on Christian genocide. Faith Keepers reveals the horrific persecution Christians in the Middle East face. The film gives first-hand accounts of those oppressed for their faith. Take a look at this trailer. The current status of Christians and other non-Muslim minorities throughout the Middle East is the worst it's been in centuries. 21 people were killed when a powerful bomb exploded in front of a Coptic Christian church. Muslim mobs began attacking Christian churches. They are targeting churches, temples, cultural, historical sites. يعني بغضوني بالقوة واختصبوني وتقريباً أربعة أيام خمسة أيام رجعت للبيت هو كان بسيارة راجع من من شغله لزمو إيده ورجله ورايده ويقطع رأسه. I converted from Islam to Christianity. I was arrested, and after that, they gave me a death penalty. What I told the judge in this day: if loving and worshiping Christ is a crime, I'm guilty. I'm charged. The Christians of Iraq and Syria who fled ISIS narrowly escaped a genocidal campaign of mass murder, of crucifixions, and of beheadings. Now we are here in Ankawa Center for youth. Uh, we have here uh, 186 caravan, 260 families here. What is taking place in the Middle East, particularly in Iraq, is genocide. They call this ethnic cleansing. This is the real world. The administration is failing, the Congress is failing, and quite frankly, with all due respect, the church is failing. In response to persecution, I always want to tell people to pray. Stop, pray, be burdened for your brother and sister, but get involved in the fight and help. And doesn't matter how small is your voice, you can make a difference, even if you are just one person. Roma Downey and co-producer Paula Quinson hope the documentary will bring awareness to Christian Americans about the crisis in the Middle East. Churches across the country will show faith keepers tonight. Well, that's all for Good News 360. Have a great day on Purpose. Wow. Well, when you watch wow. that kind of stuff, you go, um, this country, this world is in a conflict. Mm -hmm. There's a conflict, and it's a physical conflict. Yes. In, in the spiritual world, in the spiritual realms, that's manifested in the natural. I know, I just cannot imagine that it, genocide, ethnic cleansing is bigger than it's ever has. Uh, you know, we don't really hear about that on the news. Yeah. Right. I, you know, we right. really don't. It's good for us to know. To me, a lot of times we uh, act like everything's okay and that's not okay to act like everything's okay when it's not. We do need to realize there are persecuted Christians all around the world, mm -hmm. even in our own country, mm -hmm. and take the advances that God gives us and not take it for granted, the opportunity to have a voice, to speak up, to go and do trust, act, what was our motto that we had for in God we trust? Oh, oh pray fast and vote. act. I mean, okay. but there is action that comes. So That's we're right. not just praying, but there's action parts, you know, and how can we get involved? I mean, that would be our next step. That's the question that 
we see something like this, we see the documentary, and we have to go, what's next? What can we do? And that's something that, you that's know right. what, folks, we at Cornerstone, we're going to find out how we can be a help. Prayer is one thing. We can fast, but we need to know how we can act and support our Christian brothers and sisters right. in, another, in another country. Mm -hmm. Prayer sometimes gets defined too generically. Mm -hmm. You know, we say, well, we're going to pray about it. Well, that, what's that, what's that mean? You know, I mean, you're just going to mention it at night before you go to sleep. I mean, you're going to pray about it as you eat dinner. I mean, mm -hmm. no, there's prayer is spiritual warfare. That's right. And one of the persons in that documentary said, sometimes it's not time to prayer. You know, I don't agree with that. I think prayer is always the first step in our spiritual offense. To be offensive, we have to start with prayer. We have to put fasting involved in prayer. Because if we think about it from a natural perspective, we want to get the army and go over there and rescue those people. We want to get the guns out, you know? And maybe there is a time when you have to get the guns out. But the first thing you do is we pray, we fast, and we seek God, and we That's intercede. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. It can't be casual. We can't be casual about it. We can't just say, mm -hmm. oh, Lord, bless those people. Help them. That's right. Help them. Well, that's not effective prayer. The word says in James, the effective prayer of a righteous, fervent effective prayer of a righteous man Amen. avails much. That's right. And a woman avails mm -hmm. much. So uh, mm -hmm. it's just going to stir our hearts up. We've got to wake up to the that's fact right. that this is a war for the spirit, in the spirit that's for right. the lives of people. Eternity is at stake. That's, that's why right. we have to fight. That's why when Christian television goes out, and penetrates the darkness. That's, That's right. true. Penetrates mm -hmm. the darkness, and the devil can't turn it off. You know what the Bible calls mm -hmm. the, the devil's the prince and power of the air. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, he's not liking us going through the air yeah, he's mm -hmm. not. because yeah, we're right. invading his territory. That's right. That's right. When you take the truth, what we're saying right now, taking the truth of Jesus through the airway. Mm -hmm. We're the light, and is, we're just spelling the darkness. It's penetrating that That's darkness, right. mm -hmm. and I'm just telling you, there's only 1% of all TV, now listen to me very closely, and I'm out of time. There's only 1% of all TV in the entire United States that's Christian TV. No wow. way. Yeah, 1%. In the whole world or just no, in, in the, the United, United States? No, in the United States. In the world, forget about it. I don't okay. think it's anywhere near 1%. 1%. Wow. So 1%. The, what, the 99% is everything else. else. Wow. Everything else. No, that's not all bad. Right. You know, Terry likes mm -hmm. Biggest Loser, or Greatest Loser. No, you're whatever. right. Biggest Loser. Biggest Loser. That's not it's bad. Not anymore, but that's not but Christian but TV. That's not gospel right. TV. You mm -hmm. can get encouraged. But anyway, we'll talk more about that as mm -hmm. we go forward. Cornerstone is on the front edge. We're moving forward right. in the power of the Holy Spirit Absolutely. to make a difference. Amen. Here in our region, everywhere the Lord's that's given right. us the ability to broadcast, that's our home, and we're going to defend our home in the Absolutely. spirit world Amen. by in the name of Jesus. In that's the name right. of Jesus. Terry, tell us about what's next. Well, you know, we have Drs. Mark and Michelle Sherwood. They have some special helpful tips to help us increase our muscles <laughs> on your pathway to healing. Do that again. <laughs> Your muscles sound like a Let's broke. take a look. <laughs> hi, Dr. Michelle, and hi, everyone. Well, we have a treat for you today, and I mean that literally and figuratively. What is the most convenient and fastest meal ever? Today, as you can see here, we have some of my favorite and recipe ingredients, and we're going to show you how to make what we call the Sherwood Smoothie Recipe. So, Dr. Michelle, what are we going to start with today? We're going to start by taking a handful of fresh spinach and placing it in the blender. We need more. Put more in there. More, more greens, more minerals. And important on the blender, you have to push it down by the blades because you can really cram a lot down there. You want it to continue to, to mix. Okay, so what's next? Let's add some berries. Strawberries. Okay, now we got strawberries in there. How about some of those blackberries? What are the blackberries, yes. Let's add some blackberries to the mix. What about those red things? These are raspberries. Oh, these are high in antioxidants. Vitamin C. How about some almonds? Just a few of the almonds. We need a little bit of um, a little bit of fibrous um, flavor in there. Now, special thing for you here: we have already sliced an avocado. Now, 
I have one that slides straight down the middle. So what I'm going to do, and it's really important, don't put the center of this avocado seed-like thing in there because that will not taste very well. So don't do that. So you want to kind of spoon it out of here just like this. And I try to get it right over the, right over the blender. So spoon out the avocado meat. And you can take the other one. Now avocado is really important because it has some it's like one of the superfoods, along with these berries in here. Berries are great antioxidant properties, as well as the spinach, which has great folic acid and iron content. This avocado has some wonderful fats. There's fat, essential fats in here. So I'm taking the whole avocado. It's going to make this shake nice and creamy. Getting all the meat out of there. It's in there. Push it all down there. Right now it looks like a mess, but in a second it's going to turn into some magic, I tell you. All right, so Dr. Michelle, most importantly, we're going to add this. What is this? This is clean protein of your choice. Today, we're going to have a plant pea-based pea protein. We're going to take one scoop of protein, which is about 20 to 25 grams of protein. And since there's two of us, and I'm a hungry, growing boy, we're going to add one more scoop. So let's add one more scoop in there. Let's add a scoop, scoop for you. One scoop to top it off. All right, good. Top it off. Now, we've got all this in here, and I like to give it a good uh, hit on the side with the blender. Now, whatever you're doing, get it all down there good. Now, this is very important. We have some unsweetened almond milk. So, you can put enough in there, really, when you start blending it, till you start to see it kind of come up through the spinach because there's like a little gap in there. You can kind of see that. Now you can make this thing as thick as you want it. So we'll start out right here. And I'm going to put the blender lid on. And I like to hit the pulse real quick to kind of get it agitated before I go into the full blend mode. So here we go. You ready, Dr. Michelle? Ready. All right, here we go. I'm pulsing it right now. Now I'm going to go into the Blend mode. Stop it for a second. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of the uh, protein stuck on the side, so it's actually good to take a, a spoon and kind of wipe it off there. Very good. Okay, and now we're almost there. A little more blend. We're getting close. And we're going to stop. Now, one of the fastest meals ever. It takes about two or three minutes. We have two glasses here. Of course, men, ladies first. There you are, my queen. This is for me. Looks so good. So, Perfect. we're gonna have our Sherwood smoothie recipe. And we're gonna end this thing with a toast. Here's to you. The real life family. Yum, yum. Oh my, doesn't that look really yummy? Yum, yum, yum. I'm going to go and try that at home myself. And uh, it'll be a family of a uh, meal substitute. What do you think? Anyhow, well, we'll be right back. And you know what? When we come back, we're going to pray for your request. But first, here is Stacy Frenis, and she sings her song, Storms. Everybody wishes you the sunshine, like it's magic, some kind of wonder drug. Everybody wishes you more blue skies, like being happy is good enough. My love, I wish more. I wish you i 
land of enchantment. For over five decades, the doors of this beautiful island were closed to outside visitors. Now, more than ever, we need to encourage the Christians in Cuba and preach the gospel to those who haven't heard. Join our Cornerstone Cares special mission team November 13th to the 21st as we journey to Cuba for the first time. We'll be taking the gospel to the streets of Havana through dramas and neighborhood evangelism, visiting growing Christians in local house churches, teaching children about the love of Jesus, implementing community construction projects, and so much more. Cuba needs to hear the gospel in a fresh way, and we need you. Call today for more information on how you can be a part of the Cornerstone Cares mission team. You know, we come to this place in the program where we come and pray with you for the calls that you've done, and we're going to get to that in just a second. But the song that Stacy just sang, I think is so appropriate because we have storms. We're going to go through storms in life, and the storms are really things we should cherish. We want to avoid them. You want, we, want to, we want to just always be in the sunshine laying on the beach, but it's in the storms of life that we become who God wants us to become. It's through the, that adversity, the fire of the adversity. And every day, you know, we looked at a scripture together. Today, we're going to do that too. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. that says this, Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, see, but painful. Nevertheless, afterwards it yields peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been tried by it. So that's the storm that she's singing about, the storm we're talking about. It is that process of being tried, to be tested, to prove. Now, who are you proving? Who are you going to be proven to? Do you have to prove yourself to God? No, no, no. God doesn't need to be proven to because he already knows. I'm going to tell you something that you may have never thought of, but this really means a lot to me. Listen to me very closely. You cannot disappoint God. Did, did, did you hear what I said? You can't disappoint God because God already knows everything. He, he's already there be, with you and before you. He was with you when, when the thing you did was done. He was there. So nothing's done in secret. You can't disappoint him. He loves you the way you are. So this trial that you're going through, this testing that you're going through, let's make it into a joyful celebration of God's faithfulness. Even in the darkest times, and ladies, sometimes that's what it is. It's in the darkest times mm -hmm. when it's the hardest. 
it's the hardest. Right. You know, mm -hmm. if we were going to be transparent, we're all going through something right now. Mm -hmm. You know, we may not want to talk about it on television, but there are issues in our lives right. that we stand in faith, and it's a stormy time. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I think ultimately change is at hand, and mm -hmm. the flesh hates the change. That's, you know, that's it, true. We don't like that. Even thinking of the testimony that our sister shared about how she went to Nashville and all the rejection, you know, mm -hmm. her flesh was like, what's happening here? But God had a, a plan mm -hmm. and a purpose for her life. And yesterday's program, you know, the, the guys coming out of addiction, you know, they didn't have a purpose. They were just wandering basically. And mm -hmm. the Lord helped them through that storm. And I think we need the storm to come mm -hmm. to awaken us. Amen. And well, you know, I have a prayer request for Valerie, and, you know, she's having a hard time right now, and her faith is wavering, and so I would say that you're in a storm, sure. but, you know, just like uh, Dawn shared, is that, you know, in the midst of the storm that you're in, God is there. That's right. He has not ever left you, or He will never leave you or mm -hmm. forsake you, because we can't disappoint Him. Mm -hmm. You know, That's His right. love never goes away. So despite how you're feeling, God is always constant, and He caused, wants Amen. you to come to Thank Him. You, mm -hmm. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, we can disappoint ourselves. Yeah. We do that all the time. Disappoint mm -hmm. our family and our friends. Mm -hmm. disappoint everybody else in our world, but not God, because right. right. He knows us already. But here's the thing that I want to make sure we all understand is that only He sees the future. Yes. Right. yes. Only He knows what the next thing is. That's if right. we, and I'm, often I say this, if we knew what, what God wanted to do in us, it would just freak us out. Because if so. we saw where He wanted us to go and do what, and saw what He wanted us to do, mm -hmm. We would just kind of go. We, I can't do that. Right. You know, well, the covers me. back up. Over oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we Send me back to the store. <laughs> you know? But God wants to do so much in us mm -hmm. because He wants to do so much through us. That's, That's right. right. Because He wants us to be revealed, revealed to be Christ in us. That's, That's right. Christ in us. Christ in us. Yes so that we can be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what Cornerstone's all about. That's what real life's all about, being more like Jesus. Isn't it sort of, we, I'm connecting the dots to what Stacy shared, that for her, it just came to a point of surrender, you know, where she just surrendered her, you know, her expectations, her agenda, and she just allowed God to breathe through her as to what his plan was for her life. On that's con for us. On yes. a constant basis, that's surrender. Right. Lawrence Absolutely. called in and said, he mm -hmm. is. There's occult practices going on in their home, and the home needs to be cleansed. Lord, you got to take a stand in your home. Amen. First of all, throw out anything that has to do with the devil, anything that has any kind of occult mm -hmm. association to it, throw it in the trash. Even do better than that, take it to the dump or burn it. Just get rid of it. Don't, mm -hmm. don't let anything hang, uh, linger around in your house. If there are people like that, get away from them. Mm -hmm. and, and cleanse your house. Go with, and this sounds going to sound weird, just take some olive oil and go around and anoint the doors yeah. of your house mm -hmm. and the windows of your house and ask for the Holy Spirit to cleanse your house. Use, use your authority. If you're Lord, if you're a Christian, if you're not a Christian, call us right back and say, how do I become a Christian? Because you don't have got the authority if you don't know Jesus. But when you get mm -hmm. Jesus in your life, Holy Spirit in you, you've got the authority over all these foul demons. Cast them out, cleanse That's them, right. get rid of them. And mm -hmm. call us if we can help you in any way. Karen called. Uh, her grandson is, I can't read that. He's, he's got cere cerebral, cerebral palsy, palsy and he needs mm -hmm. prayer. Uh, Jane called and asked for healing. She got bit by a dog, Jane. Mm, that's that's Lord, very traumatic. Help, help Jane mm -hmm. with that. Terry, you've got, you've got oh, something. Oh, right. Uh, Leah and Anthony, they need favor and finances. They have two little babies and they want to have, they want to be able to buy a new home and they need favor yeah, for their right. business and their jobs. That's good. So we just really believe that let for me, you. Let me just say something to what's the name mm -hmm. of Leah and yes, Anthony. And Anthony. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. you got a family and praise God. You've got work and business. Now here's, here's, here's one word of advice. Don't hoard your money. Give your money. Be a giver. Mm -hmm. If you be a giver, you'll work your way out of debt. You'll work your way out of uh, lack by being a giver. Mm -hmm. Give to the ministry. Give to somebody else. Give and you shall receive. That's, a, that's the principle of the kingdom. Don't let that pass you by. Mm -hmm. That's how the devil keeps us poor because he keeps us trying to hold on to our money. Right. All right. And how about you, Ed? Uh, 
Tina, she had called in for protection, healing, and deliverance, and for her three children. So we know God is able, and so we just extend our faith with you, and we thank you, Lord, that they are on the course that you've called them to, mm -hmm. and that Tina has the healing and the deliverance that she needs in her life, because that's mm -hmm. who you are, Father God. Amen. Well, Maria's in the mm -hmm. same situation. She's under spiritual attack, and she has battle fatigue mm -hmm. and needs refreshing. Just receive that refreshing in the name of Jesus, Absolutely. Maria. We're going to pray in just a second. James and his wife, Janet, they need a restoration of their marriage. That's right. You know, that happens in, in most marriages. It gets to that point where they need, the marriage needs to find a new ground. So we're going to pray for that new ground for you, Absolutely. for James and for Janet. And um, Herman, he has asked for, he needs help with his finances and his health and safety. And we just, we just pray that that is something that you're going to see victory in. And for mm -hmm. Mandy, you're depressed. You said you have some emotional problems and fear. And we just really bind that in Jesus' name because you know that's yes. not from God. That is from the enemy who wants to steal your joy. Well, let's put all these mm -hmm. prayer requests in the Amen. middle. We're going to pray in just a mm -hmm. second. Praise report, though. You know, praises uh, bring faith. And here's the praise report from Linda. She had heart catheterization, needed heart catheterization, and was afraid about that. Everybody would be. She prayed with us, called and asked for our partners to pray. And they did the procedure, no further blockage in the heart. Everything looks great. No need for continued treatment. Praise God for that, Amen. Linda. Thank and you, then, Lord. Uh, bah, 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 I don't see Baptism a person's name. Somebody called, Lawrence called, and received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with power. Amen. And with the fire Thank of the Holy you, Lord. Spirit. Praise Let's God. pray. Thank Lord, yes, each Lord. of these people mm -hmm. are precious to you, Lord. Each one precious mm -hmm. in your sight, each one, Lord, you sent Jesus for, if it was just them, Lord, we pray that you go into each of these lives through yes, your supernatural yes. power and touch the need where it needs to be touched. Provide where it needs provision. Lord, deliver where there needs to be deliverance. Thank Lord, you. bring people across the path, Father. Let, let your will be done in their lives as it is in heaven. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Listen, you can get uh, Stacy's book. Come to our website, ctvn.org. We'll show you how to find it on, on, on the web. God bless you. Thank you for being our partner. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for walking with us every day. That's the journey I'm talking about. Every day on real life. We take a step on that journey. We'll see you on tomorrow's program. Hi everyone, I'm Phil Keggy, and I've been fortunate enough to play musical venues all over the world for thousands of people. And while gigs like that are really amazing, the best job I've had is being a husband and a father. Having been involved in all sides and all aspects of the music industry, I know the challenges and the costs associated with producing good, quality, family-appropriate programming. Cornerstone has a unique blend of inspiring and entertaining programs that you can know when you leave the room. It's safe for the whole family to watch. They have the latest in Christian kids programming as well as movies that my wife and I can watch on those special nights at home alone. Cornerstone is there to invest in your family and in mine. They provide us great things to watch. And they're there 24-7 for us to pick up the phone and offer us prayer and support. A television network that looks out for me, my family, and for you. That's Cornerstone, and that's the difference. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.